breaking news. Gear Patrol has bought DP Review. I didn't know who they were either, but I will tell you. Nikon recalled the Z8, including my Z8. It's a pain and I'll tell you about it. Plus Nikon announced firmware for this and then pulled a very important feature that I was looking forward to. And Nikon has two new lenses. First, I want to tell you about my sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a platform for making the website of your dreams. Anything you can imagine starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. This could be a photography portfolio or a video reel or a web presence for whatever business or personal project you have in mind. These websites are capable of doing anything, really. Take orders from clients, set up appointments, get deposits, share images with your clients, make your restaurant look beautiful. Everything you imagine starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. You'll get a free trial. And when you love it, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you for making this possible, Squarespace. First story is, Gear Patrol has bought DP Review. DP Review, as you might know, is really the biggest name in photography for like 20 years now. They review like every camera and lens, but DP Review is also a massive, massive community of photographers communicating and usually fighting with each other and getting kind of petty. We were all shocked and heartbroken when Amazon, who owned DP Review, announced they were just deleting it and it would all just go away and there wouldn't even be an archive available. And you, the community, spoke up. You reached out to Amazon and said, this is unacceptable. I'm not buying camera gear from Amazon anymore. And then Amazon said, whoa, 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 slow your roll. Maybe we can work something out. And it was only at that point that Amazon decided to actually try to sell it instead of deleting it. Because I think at that point, DP Review must have been so unprofitable that it didn't have enough value for Amazon to even go through the process of trying to find a buyer and transferring over all those assets, a process that in itself has a massive amount of cost. So Amazon simply decided to unplug it. But people speaking out, saying they weren't going to buy from Amazon probably changed the math enough that they decided to go through that trouble and probably take a bigger loss on DP Review than they already were. Well, they've announced the buyer. Here's how they describe themselves. Gear Patrol is the definitive buying guide for men. Our experts review and curate the best in cars, tech, home, outdoors, style, and watches. I thought I followed all the tech blogs, but I never heard of Gear Patrol. And when I look at Google Trends, I can see that Gear Patrol has been really significantly smaller than DP Review up until about the last year. If you look at the last year, you can see it's about two thirds as popular as DP Review as the photography community has begun to dwindle and the overall tech community has begun to grow. So Gear Patrol seems to be smaller than DP Review ever was, but certainly smaller than DP Review was in their heyday. And it's worth noting that Gear Patrol also has Gear Patrol Studios, which is a content creation firm. They do photography and video and branding effort. So it's not just the blog, but they're actually creators in and of themselves, which is really interesting to me. So here's what's happening to DP Review. First, Chris and Jordan, they're still at Petapixel. They're not going back to DP Review. And DP Review's YouTube presence does seem to be the worst for it. I know YouTube viewers, you connect to individuals, to people, not to brand names. We saw this when Kai left Digital Rev. Digital Rev was by far the biggest YouTube channel all around. Kai left and it was almost dead overnight. And then Kai went on and started his own channel and he's had great success with that. Chris and Jordan, likewise, their viewers pretty much will just follow them wherever they go. So I think that's a big loss. And we see that in June, DP Review has only released one video and it hasn't done as well as the Chris and Jordan videos did. DP Review has a TikTok, but they haven't put anything up on it in four months. They've only done three Instagram posts in the last month. And even their main blog, they're only doing about one post per day. And that's nothing compared to blogs like Petapixel that can easily do 10 posts per day. So I do wonder how they were ever going to sustain themselves financially without churning out a lot of content. But if you look at Gear Patrol's announcement about keeping DP Review running, they do list the team members and they're listing 11 team members. And at least many of them are in the Seattle area, which is an expensive area. The average salary in Seattle is about 75K, but 
these are high-end tech positions, so I would expect their salaries to be closer to 90 or 100K. And when you add in the facilities, plus there's a ton of travel here. The DP review guys are usually traveling to each of the different camera events, which there can be more than a dozen of those per year. You're looking at, I don't know, at least a million and a half per year cost that they need to offset with any revenue. And when I look at how they would be generating revenue, I have a hard time making that balance. And certainly Amazon saw that. Amazon wasn't making it work or they would not have shut it down. And if anybody could have made it work, I would have thought it would have been Amazon because Amazon is so well positioned to monetize all those views by just directly selling people the camera equipment, right? So how is Gear Patrol, a blog and a content creation studio going to make DP Review work financially without Chris and Jordan, which were two of the biggest attractions? I, I don't know. Um, they don't announce any additional layoffs, but they do say that they're still working things out. And to me, that's corporate speak for we want this merger to be publicly positive. So we're not going to announce big cutbacks now. We're going to instead wait a month or two and try to do it quietly. And I, I think that's probably what's going to happen. They don't announce any changes to DP Review, but I think there's going to be something because it does not seem sustainable unfortunately. Only time will tell. But I love the DP Review team. I've been a member and a fan since I was like 23 years old. <laughs> and I, I hope that they continue to flourish. Now let's talk a lot of Nikon stuff. First up, the Nikon Z8 recall. Nikon said that some Z8s, maybe all of them, it seems like have a problem attaching lenses where you might not be able to attach a lens. And I've used multiple lenses and adapters on my own Z8 and never had a problem. But when I put my serial number into their system, it did report that my camera was part of the recall and I needed to send it back. That is such a pain because they, they give you a shipping label and they'll, they'll cover all the costs and the cost of the repair, but they ship it out UPS ground and they ship it back UPS ground and they don't even give an estimate for how long they're going to have it. So I, I would guess it was going to be at least a couple of weeks in transit and repair. And I don't know why. They say lenses won't attach, but mine is attaching lenses. And I don't know if that means that suddenly a lens might not work when I'm in the middle of a photo shoot. And so I really better get it taken care of. Or if maybe it's nothing, I wish they'd give you some more information on how to assess the severity of this recall to see if I actually needed to go through it. Or at least for a $4,000 camera, could you ship it priority and try to move things along a little bit faster or maybe send me a loaner while you're working on my camera? I don't like how they're really handling this recall, but at the same time, just doing a recall is good. It's certainly better than overlooking it and I appreciate that part of it. That's weird, but this is weirder. In their Nikon Z9 firmware version 4.0 announcement, they describe this amazing auto capture feature where something moves in the frame and the camera will just take pictures of it. And I actually spent a lot of time working with it and wildlife and it does work pretty well. One of the things Nikon said in that video and that I reported on in our last news piece was that that firmware update would be coming to the new Nikon Z8. But then Nikon rumors spotted that they had taken that out of the video. And I happen to have saved the original version of that video. And so here you can see me comparing the original version of the video to the version that's currently available on YouTube. And there is about an eight second clip missing. Here is what is said in that eight second clip. This feature is available in both stills and movie mode. And in the near future, you can find it on the Nikon Z8. Nikon did not change the link to the YouTube video and you cannot replace videos on YouTube without changing the link. And what this means is that they must have used YouTube's own editing tool to go in and edit the video in place because you can trim out pieces of a YouTube video after it's posted. But this is so strange because Nikon didn't make an announcement saying we take that back. They didn't publish a new video saying please ignore the old video. They replaced it in place without telling anybody. Some eagle eye just happened to notice that it was missing and I can confirm they did cut it out. And I reached out to Nikon PR and followed up and they said they would get back to me and they didn't. But they definitely know because somebody definitely went in and deleted a very specific eight second clip from that video. And I think what that means is Nikon is not going to give us the auto capture feature 
on the Nikon Z8 that they're going to keep that Nikon Z9 exclusive. Personally, as a former software developer, I believe it's okay to differentiate different models based on software features only. And if that's Nikon's decision, that's okay. But it's weird that you would tell us you were gonna give it to us, allow YouTubers and blogs to repeat that the Z8 was going to get that feature, give people the opportunity to actually place orders for the Z8 based on that information, and then re retract it just very quietly. Very bizarre behavior, Nikon. June has been like all Nikon, and it's all been a little bit weird. <laughs> Nikon's new 70 to 180 F2.8 is $1,250. And it's weird because they also have a 70 to 200 F2.8, which is their professional line lens, and it's more expensive, so this is gonna be a lower end lens. But this is a Tamron lens that has been rebranded as Nikon. The exact same lens exists for Sony and it's priced at $1,100. So Nikon is adding in $150 premium. That, that's okay, it's just weird. I mean, it's kind of nice because if you have Nikon professional services, they will be able to service it for you and the look and feel of it will match your other Nikon lenses, but it is weird that they're charging $150 more for the exact same lens. On the other hand, it's good news if you compare them to Canon because Canon isn't allowing the Tamron lenses at all. So even though it's $150 more, at least you have that option available as a Nikon shooter. And if you want to buy it, you can check out both the new lenses at sdp.io slash new Nikon. The other new lens is a wildlife lens, 180 to 600 millimeter, lower cost super zoom. Wildlife lenses like this are extremely important to an infrastructure. So many people get into wildlife and they don't want to spend $13,000 like you would on a 600 F4, so they want something under 2K. We recommended the Nikon 200 to 500 for years, still fantastic. This is the replacement for that. It's a 180 to 600 F5.6 to 6.3, and the price at $1,700 is very fair. We'll definitely review it when it's available, so be sure to subscribe to see that video, and if you want to order it now, go to stp.io slash new Nikon. In the comments down below, let me know what you think of DP Review's new owner and what you think that means for DP Review. Also, let me know what you think of that missing Nikon Z8 firmware. What was Nikon doing? Just pulling it out of the video and not telling anybody about it. And don't forget to check out our sponsor, Squarespace. That makes amazing websites incredibly easy for you. You see, social media just isn't enough anymore. You have billionaires just buying social media and completely changing it. You have your competitors literally taking out advertisements on your own pages. You need to control your messaging on the internet. You need to be able to control your colors and your fonts and your branding and the layout of your images so that everything looks as good as possible. The best way to do that is squarespace.com slash Tony. I have multiple different websites set up to show off my work, to show off personal projects, and I find Squarespace incredibly easy and extremely affordable. Sign up at squarespace.com slash Tony and you can make it even more affordable by knocking 10% off using the coupon code Tony. Thanks for sponsoring us, Squarespace. Bye.